Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I am going to highlight a few things that I think we've all done at one point or another that will hold us back in making progress in our practicing. And I will finish the video off with 10 tips that I have come up with over the years that have really helped me make progress in my practicing. Before we get into that, I want to thank my patrons for supporting my channel. And as a thank you, I am going to start a 28 day challenge where patrons can embark on this practice journey and try to implement some of these practice tips or your own practice tips in order to get better over the course of four weeks. I am going to include more details in the description below. And if you're not already a patron and you want to support my channel and give this 28 day challenge a try, go ahead and click on the link below. So one of the biggest things that we do and are practicing that will hold us back from actually getting better is just playing through the music. We just have our favorite tunes, we play them over and over and over again, but we don't actually try to get better at them and we don't actually try new stuff to challenge ourselves. Coming right off of that, we will also just sometimes go through things pretty mindlessly. I know I used to do my 30 minutes of Albert scales while also thinking about what I was going to eat for dinner and I wouldn't really think about how I sounded or what my hand position was doing or if my embouchure was changing every time I went over the break. I didn't pay attention to that stuff. I just would play through the page, go up two clicks, play through the page, go up two clicks. And I learned the scales, but I didn't really get that much better in my own playing until I started to focus more on why I was doing it. And when I started to really listen to myself, that's when I started to get better. We also tend to think that just getting the notes and the rhythm is enough. And once we, once we get the notes down and we're like, oh, yep, we're done. But there's so much more to music than just getting the notes down. We, got, we have to think about tone. We have to think about what we're doing with our fundamentals. So uh, we need to think beyond the notes if we want to see improvement in our musicality. The next thing is that we're not challenging ourselves enough. And I already sort of addressed this, but we need to make sure that every time we practice that we push ourselves just like a little bit further than where we're at. We can't try to be like, you know, world-class clarinet player all in one day, but just taking baby steps little by little, day after day, we can get closer to what our goal is, but we have to be patient and we have to challenge ourselves. Otherwise, just playing stuff isn't gonna make us better. And going off of that, a lot of us will set the timer and just practice for a certain amount of time, say 30 minutes. You know, I'm gonna get better because I'm playing my instrument 30 minutes every day. But again, you're just playing through stuff and you're, you're just playing for 30 minutes and that it, that's it. So one thing we could do instead of just doing the timer and playing stuff for 30 minutes, we could set intentional goals. For example, you know, you have a two measure chunk that is really giving you trouble. So let's say you slow it way down and then you say, I'm gonna get 10 perfect repetitions of these two measures before I move on to something else. And that may take you five minutes, it may take you 10 minutes, but I guarantee it's going to help it stick a lot sooner. And then the last thing is, I think a lot of us practice too much all at once. So I know a lot of us will be like, weekend, woo, let me practice five hours on Saturday. And then you really don't get that much work done past hour like two or three. So it's just, you, you just won't get any better. So it's much more effective and your brain will love you more if you space your practice out over the course of a week. It's so much better if you review everything every day from the day before and build off of that to challenge yourself little by little and move up those steps to the level that you wanna to get to. So I have, I have a list of 10 tips that I'm gonna share with you guys uh, for making your practice more effective. And there are so many more practice tips out there that 
this is just kind of skimming the surface, but it will at least get you started and get you thinking creatively about and mindfully about what you're doing when you practice. And in addition to that, if any of you guys have ideas, leave them in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. We have to remember that we are our own teachers when we're practicing. And if you go into a practice session with that mindset that you're your own teacher, then you will be able to pick up on more of your issues. You'll be able to identify problems and come up with solutions for fixing them a lot better than if you just went into it you know, I don't know, woo, and playing stuff. So think about practicing as an opportunity for you to teach yourself. And when you go into your practice sessions, it could be helpful to keep a little notebook around. So if you do have a major breakthrough, you can write those things in. Um, or if you want to make sure that you're actually making progress, you can just jot down a quick journal entry on what you're working on and how you solved certain issues. Okay, so number one, quality is always better than quantity. So as I said before, it's a lot more effective to practice with a goal in mind rather than with a set duration in mind. Now, sometimes you really only do have to you have 15 minutes and you got to get out the door or something and you got to go somewhere and yes having a timer can help so you don't get like wrapped up but if you set an attainable goal for yourself to achieve in a short amount of time then you'll retain that information much better in the long run the next thing is when you practice each segment of your routine Think about the purpose of each segment. So for example, when you're warming up, why, why are you warming up? What are you warming up? What are you doing? What's the purpose of that, right? We wanna make sure our lungs are really breathing deep. We wanna make sure our embouchure is doing the right thing. We wanna make sure our tongue is in the right position, that we're articulating in the right place. Our fingers are operating. Don't just grab your clarinet and just start blowing. We're not gonna get better that way. So even the easiest part of your practice session should keep you fully engaged. Now this tip is my favorite. We want to practice in small chunks for improved retention. Review those chunks every day until you have it down. So for example, if you've got a one or two measure lick that always gives you trouble when you're playing through a passage in your music, just isolate that little chunk and practice that chunk a lot. Get your 10 repetitions in and that's gonna help things stick much, much better in the long run. Another thing that I like to do is try to make sure I get one thing down every day of practicing. So, you know, and it, it could be like, you know, again, like a two measure lick that always gives me trouble. I want to feel like I really have that little spot mastered. So I'll work on that a lot and I will consider it an accomplishment if I can do that one thing by the end of the day. Another really common thing that everybody will do in practicing, I think, is to practice very slowly. But I'm going to add to that and say that when we practice slowly, we want to make sure that we practice mindfully with intention. So don't just press the buttons in the right order make sure that you're really listening to how the phrase unfolds as you play it slowly even if it's just one measure of of music that you're trying to trying to learn you want to listen to how these intervals go from one to the next you want to make sure your embouchure is doing the right thing your air is doing the right thing your fingers are in the right position and that you're really internalizing what you do whenever you practice slowly so if you go into a lesson and your teacher is like, hey, I think you need to do more slow practice, but you're like scratching your head and you're like, I do so much slow practice on this. It could be that you're not really thinking about what you're practicing and you're kind of mindlessly just pressing buttons. And this brings me to another common tool that we use in practicing. We use our metronomes a lot to make sure we're playing in time, to help us with rhythms. And I'm just gonna throw this out there because many of us have problems playing with a metronome. When you practice with a metronome, you have to make sure that your beats line up with the click right in the center of the click. And if you're not sure, then record yourself and listen back and just keep trying until you can get it. 
and maybe practice in smaller chunks so you can really line things up with the metronome. It's so much more difficult than we think to really line up our beats in the pocket of the metronome. We want to make sure that we're also practicing creatively. So uh, one of the things that I'm constantly doing whenever I'm practicing or playing my instrument is asking myself, does this sound good? Do I sound in tune? Is my rhythm accurate? Do I like what I hear? Am I playing with expression? Do I feel any tension? And these are things that I'm just always cycling through. And um, if I answer no to any of those questions, then I will take the, the issue at hand and I'll try to break it down into manageable segments so I can make it sound and feel the way that I want to. So one example could be the opening part of the second movement of Stravinsky. So, you know, it's a lot of notes right there. And, you know, say I give it a try and I read through it and it's kind of messy. I feel a little tension in my throat. I'm not 100% confident with some of the fingerings and my embouchure's all over the place. Well, number one, I would say, okay, I need to learn the fingerings better. So I'm gonna slow it down. Number two, if I'm feeling tension up here, it means that I'm clenching while I'm breathing. So when I practice slow, I'm gonna make sure I'm breathing deeply and exhaling in a relaxed way. And number three, I will say, okay, these are a lot of notes and then unusual pattern. So I'm going to practice in smaller groups rather than try to do the entire opening phrase all at once. I'm not gonna remember that. So I may do repetitions of six notes at a time until I've worked on the entire phrase and then put it together and then gradually speed it up until I'm at a comfortable tempo. And, and, and there we go. So creative practicing, breaking it down into little manageable pieces. Another thing we can do is gamify our practice sessions. So one really common example of that is to make sure that we are getting our reps in for specific troublesome spots, right? So let's say you got a two measure chunk that's really giving you trouble always. So, or even like, you know, the cadenza part and Peter and the Wolf, that little triplet, that chromatic triplet part, um, you used to always give me trouble. So I would do this game. I'd put 10 pennies or 10 of something on my, on my music stand. And then I would play every time I got a perfect repetition, I would move the pennies over until I could get 10 in a row. If I messed up, even on the 10th one, I had to start over. So by the time I finished, I will have gotten more repetitions in of perfect playing than imperfect playing. And that's what we want, to be able to really get our brains to solidify these patterns. And, and it's also fun because you feel accomplished at the end once you've, once you've been able to do it a certain number of times in a row. The last big thing is to make sure that we're practicing a little bit every day instead of one big practice session all at once. So if you find yourself being just a Saturday practicer, see if you can find more opportunities through the week, even just 10 minutes in the evening every day to sit down and review what you did the day before and then try to teach yourself a little bit of something new or challenge yourself. I guarantee you're gonna see progress a lot quicker if you can manage little practice sessions once a day. So thank you all so much for watching. I know you guys have so many more tips of your own, so I would love it if you could leave comments below on some of your favorite practice tips so we can all learn from each other. And I actually look forward to seeing what you guys will put so I might try some new things myself. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a good week next week, and as always, happy practicing.